Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about finding your own style with Flip Studio Paint Brushes with Ludovico Serra, also known as Lenny Bunny. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the go to webinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded and the recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Marek Niones, myself, and Ludovico, also known as Lenny Bunny. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time or not, never heard about Flip Studio Paint, Flip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for studying, ready to publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at flipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. Also, we would like to invite you to share the webinar through your Instagram stories. Tag us as hashtag webinar at lennybody93, graphicsly, Wacom, and Clip Studio Official. We'll be sharing your stories. Ludovico Serra, also known as Lenny Bunny, is a freelance illustrator and 3D artist. He creates he creates and sells brushes using his deep knowledge in Clip Studio Paint. Then he says he fell in love with the software from day one. He became an official Clip Studio Paint expert in 2021. So with that, I will leave you with Lenny and his presentation, finding your own style with Clip Studio Paint brushes. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. I'm Ludovico, the panelist for this webinar. Here you can see, in short, why I love Clips You Paint. Because you can have a huge array of styles, like, for example, this kind of comic with a little bit of watercolor, coloring, sorry for the wording, a full-blown watercolor, at least for Italian taste, and a painterly style with a lot of texture, a lot of intriguing textures. And the really cool part is that it's done by using uh, some very basic knowledge. Everything you see here, it was done with the basic knowledge that I will tell you about today. Now, if you want to see a little bit more, you can find me on Instagram, as Lenny Bunny, as Mario said, on Gamrod with the same name, and you can even find me on Graphics3, in which I sell the brush pack. You will find all the brush uh, that I use it for the three pieces I've shown you previously. Now, being said that, let's start with the webinar. Now, first of all, I will use the standard Clip Studio Paint uh, interface so everyone can uh, uh, follow around because this webinar wants you to create your little brush uh, giving you a little bit of an experience on how brush making works in case i talk uh, about uh, palette uh, it's the technical term in clips you paint for uh, window Okay. If I talk about a palette like, uh, for example, subtool, uh, subtool palette, like this one, and you don't find it, but I will just uh, remove it as an example. You just need to go here at the top, go to window, and just click on subtool. I just put it back, like here. Just let me do a little bit of house cleaning. And in this way, you can activate, deactivate your palette. Now, for the first step of this webinar, I want you to go to the millipen. The millipen is just here in the tool palette. This one is the tool palette. And 
is just right below the eyedropper. Probably you will go into pen subtool group, you go to the marker and you will find the Miller pen. Now, you will need to duplicate it. You just need to right click duplicate subtool. Now, for a little bit of cleaning of housekeeping, we will call it workhorse brush. Okay? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was for the webinar test. Not an issue, not a problem. Uh, ta -ta, and it will go just here. Why it's called. Sorry, uh, sorry for the delay. And now we just need, as for having a cleaner interface, and so you can, you know, duplicate and uh, uh, play a little bit around uh, with this brush. We just need to create a little bit of a folder in the tool palette. To do so, you just need to click on the webinar brush, keep clicking, dragging it to the tool palette. And if you see a red square, don't release the mouse or the pen. You just need to go until you see a little bit of a red line. I will put it on top because of a little bit of a organization. We put it on top, we click here, and you have your webinar brush tool group. Now, what the various option do? Let's start with the easiest one, okay, the brush size. The brush size is something extremely helpful to you because it lets you decide how big your brush wants to be, uh, how much uh, big your uh, your mark, your stroke. For an example, because you know, a small mark, it's uh, uh, it gives this a little bit of a cold feeling. If you know, for example. Uh, Moebius. Moebius use a small line because the point is the color, but a bigger line gives uh, uh, obviously a more uh, warm feeling, a more cartoonish feeling. Okay, so let's uh, let's just control C away. So what the option do. Now, if you are uh, a focused person, you will see brush size, the value, and those little two check mark here. What does check mark uh, uh, means? Okay. First of all, English is my second language. Sorry for my pronunciation. <laughs> so let's click on those two check marks. Okay. Now, you see there is brush size dynamics. Now, I will, this window, I call it uh, uh, in an unofficial way, it's not official, this name, pen, size, uh, pen dynamics, because it takes your, your pen input, like pen pressure, tilt, velocity, and, well, random gives you a random value and create an output, okay? For example, if I remove, remove velocity, if I press a little bit less, you will have a smaller brush size. But as you can see, it's not so big, the difference, because, well, here I have minimum, minimum value, 80. What that 80 mean? It means that the brush size will not go below 80% of the value you have input. For example, if you put 100, it will not go below 80. So if you want to have, you know, a more uh, a bigger gap, you know, thanks to the pen pressure, um, a bigger difference in size, 
we just go a little bit lower, not 80, that it's practically the full size of the brush, but you know, zero or something like 10. It's not a perfect science. Now, what this little curve means, okay? It means that you have on the left, in short, what the brush uh, uh, do in the, in the basic state, okay? While you don't have the pen on the tablet, okay? On the right, you have the setting for when you press on the tablet, okay? In this way, I have a pretty simple curve, nothing special. But what happens if I go a little bit lower and I have a steeper curve? I will have a steeper variation. If I create a little bit uh, of a beer belly, you know, when you drink a lot of beer, you have this kind of belly. Uh, I will need to go really, uh, I, I will need probably to remove the pen from my tablet to, you know, have a smaller brush size. So, now this is helpful, okay? Because we can use it even for other settings. Every time you see one of those little icons near the value, it means you can link it to a pen dynamics, okay? So for example, let's go to opacity. I activate pen pressure. I uh, just, I always prefer a little bit of a steeper curve here. And I will put a minimum value. If not, it's completely transparent. And as you can see, I remove a little bit the uh, pen pressure so you can see better. When I press less, I have a opacity. And you say, well, this is standard behavior. It's something that we already know. Well, this can be useful if you think a little bit, if you are a little bit, uh, uh, if you put a little bit of fantasy in there, okay? So what happens if I invert the curve, okay? And I put that the more I press, the less opacity I have. Because I have a minimum value of five, it will practically be transparent. So I need to, to put something a little bit more like 50 or 40. It's not a perfect science. You need to find a little bit uh, your favorite value, your perfect value, okay? We put, again, the pen pressure. And if I try to ink here, you will see uh, ah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I needed to increase a little bit the perm pressure. As you can see, the more I press, sorry, there was, there is a little bit of an error. I don't know. What's happening? Well, uh, this is uh, pretty strange. Uh, probably there is a little bit of a problem uh, with the drivers. I'm really sorry this shouldn't happen. Well, Let's uh, keep going. Uh, it's pretty strange, this one. Very sorry for this. Uh, like, for example, here, let's say I want a very rough brush inking. I just go press random as an example here. I just put the minimum value uh, a little bit higher. Ah, uh, yes, 
that's so right. Uh, and I will just start inking. And as you can see, you will have this kind of rough feeling with practically just a little bit uh, of a different setting here. And it will seem like you have taken a lot of ink in your brush and you have this very rough inking brush. But, you know, it's not always about inking, okay? Maybe you want a, a painterly experience. So how can you uh, have a painterly experience that is not, you know, We select a color, we reduce the opacity, and I select another color. For example, here it is little purple. I select this another color, and I continue painting. Like it, it doesn't work like this in clips to paint. To do so, we need to open a uh, See if this work right now. No, I need to check my drivers. Obviously, per Murphy Law, I have a problem right away during the webinar. Obviously, well, to have a true painterly feeling, we just need to click on this little branch bar down below the tool property here. I will just show you again this little tool property here and you will have all the sub tool detail here. Okay, meaning that you will have all the 328 brush option of Clips to Paint. In case you want an alternative way to open it, you just go to Window here, as I said before, Sub tool detail, and you have everything in here. Okay. What you do in the sub tool detail, like brush making in Clips to Paint, uh, it's practically one single thing. You go to the sub tool detail, you find an option you want to experiment, you change it, you see you like the change, and you put this little eye near the brush size. So as you can see here, I've removed the brush size here in the tool property. The super tool detail, you have all the options in the tool property, you have your uh, quick option that you want to change. So for an example here, okay, I want to change the brush size and what I can do. I just press Ctrl Alt and I can <laughs> change the brush size or command alt if you are on a mac now let's put put it back now i for the painterly feeling we go to the ink category and we go to the color mixing and right now i want you to uh we will edit a little bit this brush together to create a workhorse brush now, uh, this type of brush, uh, I've created a video tutorial on my uh, for the Clips U Tips, uh, and it won the video award, so probably it's good. Uh, so we remove in the ink category opacity and blending mode. It's don't worry, there is a meaning to this. Now we go to the brush tip, and we just select. Brush density, adjust brush density by gap. And we go to stroke and we activate blend brush tips with darken. Uh, I will activate, I will show in my tool property gap uh, because it's something that I will need for the webinar, okay? With the uh, gap value, you, you don't do it. And I just go to correction and remove adjust by speed and that's it. We have our little workhorse brush. Now, 
In Clipsy Paint for the painterly feeling, we just need to color mixing and we activate the color mixing, uh, the color mixing option. Now, what does the option do? Uh, I forgot color stretch. What does the option, those three option do? We have amount of painting and density of painting. Now, amount of painting, it's, uh, now, as you can see, while I stroke here, practically nothing happens. Why? Because I need to reduce the amount of painting. In this way, if I select another color, you can see that the color begins to mix with the previous color we put, okay? And we can even put the pen pressure. We put a little bit of a curve here. So as you can see, we can mix the color. How cool is this? Now, what density of paint does? Well, it's how much color you put on a, on a full transparent part of your layer, okay? So, as you can see here, I have a density of paint zero, and I can paint on a previously painted part, but I can't paint here, okay? So what happens if I invert this value? I can paint here, but I can't paint here. So amount of paint is how much paint, how much color you put uh, uh, on a previously colored uh, part, and density of paint uh, is how much color you put on a transparent part of your canvas. Color stretch is, well, how much your color travels. I put 20 and it's practically very short as a, as a marker. I put 100, it goes through infinity and beyond, okay? But, you know, it's not like, it doesn't feel truly painterly, okay? Because it's still a basic brush. It's still a basic round brush, okay? So how can we change the brush tips? I'm talking in plural for a reason, okay? Because we go to here, this little branch bar or, you know, in the window menu, and we go to brush tip. Now in circle, you have, uh, you have here circle and you have material. You need to go to material. What are materials? Are this one. It's all your asset. Now I will use uh, at best of my capabilities to show you in this webinar, uh, like default brush tips used in Clip Studio Paint. So you just need to click here in the add brush tip shape or just click in this big, big rectangle, okay? And I will search for water, color, splash, okay? I will increase a little bit here. Now, I need to select multiple brush tips. It's something that you can do because here's the point in Clip Studio Paint. It's not about the single repetition of one single brush tips, okay? It's about how multiple brush tips intersecate with each other how does brush tips react with each other. So I select multiple brush tips. If you are on, on a tablet uh, and you don't have a keyboard, you just need to click on this little icon below and 
<coughs> you will have those little squares in the top left part. So you just need to check them all and there we have it. Okay, now probably if I increase the brush size to let you see, you will see it, it's not good. Okay, you can see a repetition here. This part is the same as this one. Okay, so how can we uh, remove this repetition? It's very, very easy. And that's why I love Clip Studio Paint. We go again to the subtool detail. First thing, we go to the brush tip and we flip horizontal, flip vertical. And we go flip horizontal, we create random and flip vertical, random. Okay. And just right here, we have just a nicer painterly brush but we can go a lot further here, okay? We go again in the subtool detail, stroke, and this one, this option, it's the most beautiful option I ever seen in a brush engine. You go here, you put random, and you will have a random, uh, a random order in your brush tips. And you can, it doesn't matter how much you lay down, how much you paint, you will always have a random order inside your brush. Look how much cool is this, okay? We select two colors here. Ah, yeah, uh, this one, it's on me because I've put the eyedropper that can't uh, go on a blocked layer. That's on me, that's on me. So we'll just do it all the way in the color wheel. So we select two colors, a little bit of this aquamarine feeling, and we start painting and look how beautiful it is, okay? you don't have any kind of repetition and it feels like a watercolor painterly brush but here comes a very intriguing part okay and why i put gap okay now if uh, i increase a little bit the gap so you can see what uh, the single brush tips are I will just uh, reduce a little bit here, the, just remove the pen pressure. And you know what, I'll just remove color mixing so you can see what brush density and get, uh, brush density does and why it's so important for painterly brushes, okay? So let's use the black so here, the uh, pure black color, so you can see a little bit better and increase and decrease increase a little bit more the, at the gap between the brush tips and I reduce the brush density, okay? Now, as you can see, let me just uh, here, as you can see here, I have a little bit of a multiply effect between the brush tips. Why? Because the brush density, it creates, uh, as you've seen, a little bit of a multiply effect between when two brush tips encounter each other's. How can we leverage this, okay? To have uh, like, uh, a more rough painterly brush, okay? How can we do it? We just go return, color mixing, we select again our color, and you see here, it seems like we are creating a paper texture here, okay? And I just put again the pen pressure here, pen pressure again, 
and look at this i just increased the brush size and we have this kind of paperish texture okay and we didn't even need to put a paper texture okay you can't have repetition in your texture using this okay you just need to paint you just need to just color relax and paint okay but uh let's say i don't like this i want it to be the same brush density doesn't matter how much i lay down okay uh, for this i will remove the color mix just to show a little bit uh, better and i will put again on black on pure black i just need to check adjust brush density by gap so i'll just reduce here the gap between the brush tips and let me just reduce the brush side and as you can see the brush density the opacity of the brush doesn't change where the brush tips interact with each other's here's without and here's with but if you are a little bit clever you have noticed that if i paint again on the same spot i will increase the color i've put why because brush density let you do that okay every time you go again in the same spot it will increase the color you have put but let's say you don't want that you just check the option i let you put blend blend brush tips with darken here it works like opacity and right away we even have a more intriguing texture okay and as you can see there is no repetition at all okay no repetition at all and i bet i bet my title title as clip studio expert that if i go right now here in the pencil brushes okay i will find not opacity but well not only opacity but opacity and brush density or only brush density why because this little setting is what create the dry media filling okay like you are using a soft pencil in this case so let's check it out we go to pencil and brush density right away without you know changing anything pastel chalk brush density crayon brush density because these settings it what creates the pencil like effect the dry media effect like charcoal crayon uh pencil art pencil so on and so forth okay but 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 we can have you know we can even use this technique a little bit of uh, uh for graphic effect okay clip City paint helps you even in this giving you the possibility for example to create a modular uh cross etching brush okay and probably every one of you that have done a cross etching an inking you're a comic artist you're doing your inks will probably want to marry me after this okay so before this we need to do a little bit of a check on an option okay we search here for line a bit for line 
here on created materials. Search here about line and we will find, remember, search here in all materials because if not, uh, if you're on a folder, probably you will not be able to find it. And we just need to go here, down, down, down below. It's, you know, it's very, very below about this. Like, Well, here, down, 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 like this one. Unstable line, something that I like. Search for unstable line, and you need to search, use for paper texture, okay? You double click on unstable line and check use for paper texture, okay? Or if you want something a little bit uh, more compact, you can use this one, diagonal line, okay? So, you know what, let's use diagonal line because it's something that probably just search for diagonal line and check on diagonal line if you have use for paper texture, okay? This is very important, check if this option is enabled, okay? So, we go again into Subtool Detail and we go to Texture. Just a little bit of tidying, okay? To be organized, we will duplicate the Subtool Webinar Brush and we say Graphic Effect. Okay, just to be a little bit organized. So here, webinar brush graphic effect. We go to the subtool detail and we remove the color mixing. We remove the eye in the color mixing and we go to texture. And we just right away, right away, put scalar ratio, rotation angle, okay? Probably, if you are clever, you know where I'm going to with this, okay? And I just check on texture and search for diagonal line, okay? Yeah, diagonal line will give you an effect that it's more suit, uh, it's a little bit more suitable to your taste, probably. So let's go to diagonal line. And here's what happens with diagonal line. Well, you will just have these eh, only those vertical lines, but we can adjust it very fast and very easy. Okay. We just, first of all, put emphasize density. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Sorry for budgeting English. And we put this texture mode from normal to multiply and here we have a straight line okay but you say hey this isn't so much useful you know wait wait don't worry we just go below and reduce a little bit the scale ratio and as you can see now how much intriguing is this Okay, you will have this effect of your painterly brushes while you put this graphic effect. But probably speaking, if you have done inking, you know that across the etching, it's called the cross etching. You put like a vertical line near an horizontal line. Not a problem. We just go scalar ratio and we put, uh, oh, sorry, rotation angle, rotation angle, and we put uh, 90 degree on this one, okay? 90 degree, and look at this, look at this. We can create this very 
cool cross-hatching in a matter of seconds okay so if i go 45 on the rotation angle i reduce a little bit this uh the scale ratio and i put like here and look at this how beautiful it is you can create a cross etching that is not uh like a copy and paste okay you have small variation here well you prefer a more dry cross etching not a problem subtle detail brush deep circle and now you have your little bit of an art edge cross etching now more or less uh, uh, this is just a quick review of how much you can do with clips to paint with some very basic settings okay just like this with our standard webinar brush okay it's just a couple of settings okay color mixing for example painterly brush we remove the color mixing and we put the brush size and you have this amazing soft pencil feeling okay and it's all thanks to how in clips you paint uh, it's about the brush tips how they interact with each other that's the real beauty of clip studio paint okay and you can create so much styles with this okay for example uh wait a second my laptop just decided to say no uh auto saving feature <laughs> by the way auto saving saves you a lot okay so for example here you have the cross etching i've done before here we have this Moebius style okay and then we we go a little bit here we have a little bit of a noisy texture using only brushes okay this is brush this is not the texture by reflecting on how the various brush tips react with each other's okay here's another one in which wait here's the uh here's a little bit of uh for example here we have all this texture that was done you know without applying texture by itself okay it's all brushes and you can see it here okay here in this one this is a brush it's like the same type shown you before okay it's practically uh this one of my brush set the watercolor uh brush tip three uh, uh da, da. here watercolor texture tip three ah uh, yes i am on white on white obviously it can work okay and as you can see look at this those are only brush tips that you near each others and you can make so much cool stuff with this for example this very dry feeling okay you just need to put the time in creating brush tips that cater to your needs okay that's the beauty of clips your paint and i think that with this the webinar is closed and we can pass to the q and a uh, session okay um how do you know your brush is good for your 
style okay that's a very important question and it's more like uh, how um how you want your mark to be, uh, like which kind of mark you want to put okay for example i really love this kind of watercolor uh feeling but sometimes i love this dry media effect it's all about which kind of mark you want to make in that uh, uh, at that point okay it's like your fingerprint okay uh which kind of thing uh of, of uh, fingerprint uh, you put okay you want a more soft feeling you want a rough feeling it's all based on uh, what you want uh, based on that you select your brush okay uh, i hope uh, i was able to uh, answer to the question okay uh, next question okay which color is best oh boy <laughs> uh, this is something that uh, a lot of artists struggled and for example, I uh, started my career uh, like liking a lot the red U color, okay? And right now, I prefer more of a purple hue, okay? It's not about uh, uh, the perfect color, okay? It's about which color you like. But here's when stuff become a little bit, uh, uh, it's, there is a little bit of a misunderstanding. The point, it's not the color, it's the value between the colors, okay? So if you struggle a little bit with colors, this is an amazing tip uh, that you can do. You create a complete white layer, okay? uh fill layer okay you create an entire white layer okay if you want to uh, see what i did i just go to layer new layer fill layer it will create a complete uh, uh, filled layer with that color of your choosing now i just create the white layer and i put it on color okay this will practically remove the chroma from your color and you will see the uh, brightness value of your color, okay? So for example, if I select uh, uh, green, okay, here, uh, let's use uh, our webinar brush with the circle so you can see a little bit better, okay? so. As you can see, the green have this kind of brightness value. But if I go with purple, same luminosity, same saturation, we'll have a darker value, okay? So to create a good blending of colors, you need to uh, use color that can be, that have uh, a similar grayscale value and a different grayscale value, okay? So choose whatever kind of chroma you want. The most important part is the value between the colors, okay? That's what uh, the relationship of colors is about. Uh, so choose whatever chroma you want, whatever, whatever chroma you feel about, just the, just focus on the difference in value, okay? If you want to check them, remember, a complete white layer in color mode and you have a grayscale value of your colors. So here's the question, next one. Ah, yeah, <laughs> the wobbly line, yeah. <laughs> uh that's something that happens to all of us okay like uh, moebius uh, uh, to train to have that kind of precise line work uh, practically speaking taken uh 
ink bottle, go around with that, and he signed with that, draw, draw with that, you know, he did everything with that uh, ink bottle. But, you know, we don't have uh, that kind of time, nor, you know, enough uh, dresses that, you know, there is the risk of blotching ink. So we just go here and you have stabilization, okay, here. Let me just show you. As you can see, it's called here, I have a wobbly line, a very terrible wobbly line, and I just need to increase the stabilization and see the smooth line, C. That's it. Stabilization, you increase it, you have a straight line, a more uh, soft line, and you go to here, subtle detail, uh, and you go to correction, and here's the stabilization. Uh, just a quick note for painterly brushes, I don't recommend using uh, stabilization. Okay, so next question from uh, uh, what's your favorite brush that you have created? Uh, hmm. That's a tough question, but uh, uh, probably it's uh, this one, the first one I ever created. It holds a little bit a special place in my heart because it's the first one, you know? And I just use it to develop my brush making skills. And it's very uh, easy, the concept, okay? You just create, for example, a little bit of a blob. You create another blob here near it. You create another one here and it will have this gap here. So, you know, it's just a little bit of my favorite. Okay, next question. I hope I answered it correctly. Uh, do you have any tips for creating a large brush with texture without sacrificing performance too much? Uh, well, uh, this is a very intriguing question in a way because uh, right now uh, I'm using a laptop with uh, uh, from 2017 with uh, an Intel Core E5 uh, and 8 gigabyte of RAM, so it's not so powerful. And uh, I can still have this effect. Uh, and I have 175 here. And the trick is that you don't use a larger brush size okay uh, like uh, when you create brush tips uh, usually you want to go full details but if you go full details uh, you will have a very heavy brush tip so you need to find a little bit of a compromise when you create your brush tips uh, in the resolution of your final brush tips uh, for example, something that lets you legs a lot in your brushes is this texture setting, okay? Because usually a texture is something like a big canvas of 4,000 pixels for 4,000 pixels, and every time Clips You Paint tries to render that 4,000 pixel for 4,000 pixel. So, you know, just go full brush tips, and there you have your paper texture. So, uh, next question. So, how do you organize your brushes? Okay, uh, that's very, very easy. Uh, we have seen it uh, at the start of the webinar here. Uh, you just need to take a brush here and you just Click and drag it 
to create a new subtool group and after this you just put whatever you want in this subtool group uh, and you can even create subtool groups uh, in uh, inside subtool groups okay for example like this okay you just need to click and drag here and here you have two subtool groups inside a tool group how can you use it well you can put whatever you want inside your subtool groups so for example if i just increase a little bit i have here all my inking brushes i have here all my uh like main watercolor brushes uh, from my watercolor brush pack same with the painting i have all my option here like I will be honest, because of this, uh, on how you can organize stuff here in Clips to Paint, uh, I have never seen the toolbar for like four years until now, because I have everything I need here. So next question. Uh, well, <laughs> any recommendation to anyone who is a bit scared with so many brushes? Well, that's uh, a very tough question to answer. It's like, uh, look, here's the thing regarding brushes. You are not making any commitment at all to your brushes, okay? They are tools, okay? For example, I want to create uh, um, like here a uh, watercolor uh, filling. I just use a watercolor brush. Okay. Here I just, you know, check whatever uh, brush I have here that I want to check. You know, and I just say, hey, I like this one, I use this one. It's about exploring, okay? Like, uh, I want now to create uh, here uh, an acrylic filling, okay? Like a painterly filling. I just, you know, check uh, whatever kind of brush gives me this watercolor filling. Okay, so that's all. Okay, uh, I think that's all. I hope I answered to all of the question. We just want to appreciate uh, Lenny's presentation. This webinar is being recorded. It will be shared in our YouTube channel. So subscribe and you'll receive a notification. So uh, follow us on our social media as graphically gives your pain and welcome. For more information about Lenny, follow him on his socials as LennyBunny93 on Instagram, Twitter LennyBunny2, our station LennyBunny, and his website LennyBunny.com. So with that, thank you so much, Lenny, and we hope you learned a lot uh, about this webinar. This is our last webinar of 2022, so we hope you continue watching us in 2023, and see you next time. Bye-bye.